Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this new video. This one is paper 3-2 of February, March 2023 for A-level math. With that being said, let's move on to the questions that I have for you today. So let's move on to question number one. So it is given that x is equal to this equation. So x is this and this. Now, the main question is to find y in terms of x. So basically, we have to make y become the subject of formula. That's the main idea behind this question. Uh, so one thing good to know right away is ln. What is ln? Ln is simply log to the base of e. Okay, so let's try to play with this uh, step by step and make this happen. So here we have x equal to these two. Now, because these are the same, they could be combined together. So we should know, for example, when you have ln of a minus ln of b, because these two are the same, it could be combined into one big ln. Here we have a minus become divided by b. Right, so similarly, here we have something similar, right? So you will see this whole thing will become x is equal to ln and ln could be combined as a big one and here we have 2 y minus 3 divided by y plus 4 so for now we have this now um, to express y in terms of x we have first have to simplify this whole thing now for example if I tell you ln of a equal to b if I want to find the value inside the value of a it's pretty simple a is equal to the value of exponential b. Why is that? Because ln is simply log to the base of e, right? So to find the value inside, we have to send the base over here, thus a will be the value of exponential b. So using the same logic to find the value inside, right? So let me re rewrite this. Right now, simply I'm just trying to, to have something like this. Uh, 2y minus 3 over y plus 4 is equal to the value of x. So, to find the value inside, send the base over here, which is exponential, right? So you will have the value of 2y minus 3 over y plus 4 equal to exponential x. So now we are, we are one step closer, as you can see, so we have to uh, keep going, simplify. We can cross multiply. You will have 2y minus 3 equal to exponential times this should become exponential so y times exponential plus 4 exponential of x now don't forget we are trying to make y become subject so group all the y's together so here you have 2y minus y exponential x that should become 4 exponential x plus 3 now because y is common here factorize y outside you will have 2 minus exponential power x is equal to 4 plus 3 right here. So finally, y is the value of this whole thing over here, divided by the value of 2 minus exponential x. And this is your answer for question part number 1, finding y in terms of x using these concepts to find this answer. Now let's move on to uh, question number 2. So here we have to sketch the Argon diagram for these complex numbers right here, satisfying these inequalities. So here we have two inequalities that we have to look into. This one and this one. This one should be pretty simple. How about this one? We have to rewrite this to have a better idea of what we need to sketch exactly. For example, this is minus 1 over 3 pi, less equal, that should be argument. Now we always write z minus, and the rest we have to factorize, that should become the value of 1 plus 2i. Now we know exactly from what point we have to draw these arguments from this point. This is the most important thing here in this, I mean at least in the sketch of this inequality. Now let's go, let's try to sketch the argon diagram. So here we have to have the imaginary axis, um, of course use a pencil to sketch. And this should be the real axis, somewhere over here. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, should be enough. And here we have the values of 1, 2, 3, and 4. For example, right, should be enough. This is the real axis. And this should be called the imaginary axis. 
So for the first one, the point is 1, 2. So 1 plus 2, so 1 is here. 2i should be approximately over here. Right here, right? So from this point, we have to have argument between the value of this and this. Now what is this really? If you were to replace, we know pi is 180. So 180 divided by 3, that should be 60. So this is basically minus 60 degrees and 60 degrees over here. So this is an idea of what we need to kind of represent in this uh, locus. For now, let's use lines, vertical lines, to use is that as my guide. Again, you'll be using a pencil, so you can always erase it afterwards. But for now, you can use this just to guide you to draw your lines properly. OK, so from this point, I have to have the um, angle here has to be 60 and minus 60. So in what direction, which direction, so where does the line will go to represent 60? Now, you can, of course, kind of estimate the value of 60. Otherwise, we also could use this technique. Now, usually we use tan function to find the angle. So what is tan 60 really? So apply tan 60 is a value of root 3. Root 3 is root 3 over 1. Therefore, using the right angle triangle, I can derive that. 90 here, 60 over here. Tan is opposite side, which is root 3 over 1. Therefore, to have the angle of 60 in for this direction of the line, I have to move 1 and root 3, for example, right? So I can use this as a guide to kind of have this direction right. So I have to move 1. 1 is right here. And then root 3 in each direction. So root 3 is a value of 1.73. So approximately 1.73 in each direction. That should be 1.5. 0.73 should be here. Uh, 1.5.73 should be approximately over here. Now, therefore, joining these two lines will approximately show me the angle of 60 on each side for the argument. So basically, we can conclude now this is 60 and this is 60 as well. But since it is minus 60, we can, we can understand this is minus 60 for the value below. But anyway, this is 0. Answer for the first part of your question. Now, let's move on. For this one, 3, this is 1, 2, and 3. We just have to have a vertical line right here at the value of 3. To begin with, right? Here you go. Now, we have to shade the region, so combining these two. So first thing first, we know the argument has to be between those two, so between these two pink lines. Right, and then on the left side of this, so combining these two, we have to shade this region. Right, so this is your answer for question part A for the locus of these two inequalities. Uh, so, in my opinion, it's not too bad, it's just we have to know uh, how to rewrite the inequality first, and then also it's always good to know how to know how to find the direction of the line that we have to kind of sketch to show the angle is approximately 60 on the each side. So this is your answer for part A of your question. Now for part B, we have to find the least value of argument of z for the points in this region. So z, z is a complex number. It can lie anywhere in this region. It can lie here inside, on the side, here, anywhere in this region. Now where can it lie so that my argument of that complex number will be at the least value? So by observation, you can see for it to be the least value, I can, okay, look, the idea behind this question is, is that we solve this by using, using observation. So we test. If I put z here, will have the least value? Well, not really. Here, no, it will be maximum. But if I put it below here, yes, in that case, it will have the least value. Therefore, I conclude z has to be here for it to have the least argument. We have to find this angle over here for your answer. Now, how could you? How can you find this angle? We have to play around using the values given to you and see what can you derive to help you out. Now, first thing that I know from the question is that well, this angle here has to be sixty, right? So we can confirm this. 
Now, this is 3, this is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, so the length here is 2, right? Now, if this is 2, by looking at this, if this was 2, this have to be 2 root 3 for my angle to be 60, if that makes sense, right? Okay, so if you guys uh, don't understand this, no problem. I can always use the right angle triangle to derive the length of this side. For example, take this out. That should be a 2 here, 60 here, 90. Let's find this side using Sokato. This is A side, this is O side, we have to use 10, 10 of 60. A is equal to the value of, of this side, let's call this one H, over the value of 2. Therefore, H is simply 2 times 10 of 60, which is 2 root 3. So we have just derived the length of this side is 2 root 3. Now, because this and this line are in the same direction, I also understand that this length right here should also be 2 root 3. However, we don't care about all this, we care about only this length over here. So by deduction, the length over here is what? This whole thing is 2 root 3. Now this thing over here, you can see, this is the point 1, 2, the length here is 2. So this minus this, I get this. Therefore this is the value of, of what? 2 root 3 minus 2. Just the length, right? That will be the length over here. Now, once I have this, I can take out the triangle and help me to find the value required. For example, if I take this out, you will have a triangle here. So this, this, and this. We're trying to find this angle over here. Let me call this theta for now. This is 90, obviously vertical line, right? Now, this side is 2 root 3 minus 2. And what is the value of this side? This is the line of 3, right? This has to be 1, 2, 3, so 3 over here. So therefore, we know these two sides. We can use these two to find the angle over here. This is the A side, this is the opposite side, so we use 10. So of course, you have to know how to use Socatois for this. Now, this is only one of the ways to, to uh, you know, find this value. Uh, you can, all co of course, find the equation of a line to find the point of intersection and so on. Up to you. Choose the method that you find easier to, to use. Now, to find this angle, I will use 10 by using Sokato. That should be opposite side is 2 root 3 minus 2 over A side should be 3. Therefore, the angle here should be the value of the inverse of 2 root 3 minus 2 divided by 3, that will be the value of 0 0.454. Now, this is just the angle of theta, but your answer should be the least argument, so the least argument of z is minus 0 0.454, because the angle below this axis, we always describe them as negative direction, so that should be minus this one as your answer for question number two. Click the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.